Good evening, I'm Lindsey Brown. This is Nightcast. Two weeks ago today, Derek Chauvin left a courtroom in handcuffs, headed to prison in the 2020 death of George Floyd. A jury found him guilty on all counts. This afternoon, the ex-Minneapolis police officer's attorney, Eric Nelson, filed this motion asking for a new trial. He claims the court violated Chauvin's constitutional rights to due process and a fair trial, and he cites a long list of reasons why. So what is his argument? How often does this happen and what comes next? Richard Reeve brings this new filing to a legal expert to find out. The defendant is remanded to the custody of the Hennepin County Sheriff. Exactly two weeks after a jury convicted right. Derek Chauvin on second and third degree murder and second degree manslaughter in the death of George Floyd, defense attorney Eric Nelson filed a motion asking for a new trial. Is this a surprise at all? No, it is completely expected. Every defense lawyer would do this after losing a trial. Rachel Moran with the University of St. Thomas School of Law spoke to us about why Nelson would do this. The thing about these motions for new trial is that you include everything you can possibly think of because you're trying to preserve the possibility down the road that these issues could also be raised on appeal. In the filing, a long list of reasons Nelson says Chauvin's right to a fair trial was violated. He argues in part the court abused its discretion when it denied a motion for a change of venue and failed to sequester the jury for the duration of trial. And he says the publicity during the proceedings threatened the fairness of the trial. Nelson also says the jury committed misconduct felt threatened or intimidated, felt race-based pressure during the proceedings, and or failed to adhere to instructions during deliberations. For the most part, we were on the same page. But the motion makes no mention of juror Brandon Mitchell. As we reported yesterday, this photo posted to social media shows Mitchell attending the March on Washington last August. I don't end up with the feeling that he was hiding his opinions or that he was intentionally lying to keep the lawyers from understanding his feelings on the issue. Moran says Mitchell was asked two questions in his jury questionnaire, if he attended any protests in Minneapolis, and if he attended any protests against police brutality. And that's where we have what I would say is kind of a close call. The juror answered no. Well, it turns out he had been to an event in August of 2020 that was partly created in response to issues of police misconduct, but par partly also meant to com commemorate Dr. King and the civil rights movement. According to Moran, during jury selection, Mitchell was open about his opinions and support of Black Lives Matter. As Judge Cahill decides what happens next, Moran believes the jury issue will be a big focus. I think Judge Cahill will deny the motion for new trial. The juror issue I'll stand by what I said, which is I don't see anything right now that is likely to be considered misconduct, but it is a closer call. Now, prosecutors responded to the motion tonight saying, quote, the court has already rejected many of these arguments and the state will vigorously oppose them. But Moran says prosecutors will likely file a formal response with the court sometime in the next 10 days. After that, she says, there could be a hearing on the motion for a new trial. There could even be a hearing where the defense be allowed to put questions to a juror. All this, Moran says, could happen before sentencing or it could delay sentencing. Right now, it's scheduled for June 25th. So, Lindsay, a lot up in the air tonight. We'll just have to wait for Judge Cahill's decision. We will, but the process has started. Rich, thank you.